Amen. And may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. You know, there's so many things happening around us these days. Uh, natural disasters, fires and flooding, uh, the collapse of the uh, condominium in Florida. Uh, we realize just how fragile life can be. Sometimes we like to think that we are quite powerful, that we're quite capable of doing all things, even to the point where there's no room for God in our life. And then these unexpected but tragic things happen, and we're reminded how frail we really are, how unpredictable life really can be, how we have to trust and depend upon the Lord at all times, how blessed we are to be able to come before him at this Holy Mass uh, to ask for his pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you've come to heal sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you alone are the way, the truth, and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us to your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking to me say, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses, in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord.
friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joses, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning. Very happy to be here. Uh, coming in from Detroit, I didn't know if I was going to have to switch to a rowboat or not. But it seems we have more flooding where I came from than you have here in uh, this land of lakes. Uh, lots of flooding back there. Not sure if it's the intensity of the rain uh, or a lot of debris filling up our sewer system or a combination of both, but my goodness, we're facing a, a strange situation with all this flooding. And then there are so many whose lives are being altered by the flooding, natural flooding, losing their homes, and, and that's so painful too, so we have to remember them just as we pray for those who have lost their lives just so recently in that terrible collapse in Florida of the condominium. But the good news, the good news this morning, um, interestingly, we hear Paul, and Paul is talking about this thorn in his side. What is that? Is it pride? Is it uh, an ego issue? Sometimes ego can be very strong and people can take themselves so very seriously. We all can. Or is it temptations that trouble him? Is it at times, though he runs the good race, a temptation to kind of give up, fearful that he might be persecuted in the name of Christ? And yet Paul tells us very valiantly, that he, when he is weak, he is strong. When he is not depending upon himself and his own skills and talents, when he is putting his trust in the Lord and then using all those skills and talents, he is strong. He is strong. Because in all things, if he has Christ with him, he can do very well. We all can. And that's a message for us, as Paul writes this very valuable letter to the community. If we allow ourselves to put our trust in the Lord, and then we walk with the Lord, we can do great things for him. And then we come to our, our gospel reading, according to Mark. And this gospel reading reminds us of how Jesus is known in his own and among his own, just as the carpenter's son. And it's very interesting how the scripture ends it, saying he could perform no mighty deeds there except from curing a few sick people by laying hands on them. Well, that's a, that sounds pretty mighty to me. But that he was amazed at their lack of faith. They didn't know him didn't know who he really was. Do we 
do we? Not a catechism answer. Not something we memorized, but something that we have internalized in our life. Do we know who Jesus is? Just this past Tuesday, the gospel reading uh, for the uh, feast of St. Peter and Paul, great feast in the church, had Jesus walking with his disciples and then asking them a question that he asks every one of us. Who do you say that I am? He asked, who do people say that I am? And they gave all these different answers of prophets and so forth. But then he looked right into their eyes. He looked right into their heart. And he said, who do you say that I am? We could paraphrase that, really. The question could be, what do I really mean to you? Don't give me your fine talk. Don't just be suddenly pious when you answer this question. Get down into your life, get into your heart, get into how you live day by day, really. Get into the things that fill your mind, really. And then answer the question, who am I to you? What do I mean to you? How would you answer that question? Jesus could appear to any one of us, any one of us, sitting here in this church this morning, right in the quiet of our own home, and suddenly appear to us and look us right in the eyes and said, okay, wake up. Wake up. What do I mean to you? What do I mean to you? How would we answer that question? Well, we might think about when we fell in love and we were so happy and thrilled and we'd say, oh, you're the Lord who brought joy into my life. Or when we saw, if we are so blessed, our firstborn child, the miracle of life. Oh, you're the Lord of life, you're creator. You are the, the one who has gifted me with something greater than anything in the world. Or when we achieve something, or someone in our family that we're proud of has achieved something. Why, Lord, you're our companion. You're there at all times, and you bless us in so many unexpected ways. Or if I was suffering, ill health, I lost my job, I was let go. Someone in the family has uh, test results showing very poor health, critically ill, perhaps. How would I answer that question? How would I answer that question? Or would I just be preoccupied with saying, well, Lord, where are you? You were always there in all these good moments, and now I'm suffering, and I, I don't know what to say to you. It's the same, Lord. The same God who was there. Would I say you are the crucified one who suffered and died for me so that I might not ever lose trust and confidence in you? Some do, you know. They want the Lord to be the gift giver. They want the Lord to make them smile and happy. But what if life isn't like that? then how do we answer that question? Or maybe it's just ordinary, regular, day-by-day -day things. And I'm tempted to be lazy. I'm tempted to never read the scriptures. I'm tempted to not practice my faith. I'm just kind of lazy. Well, how would I answer that question? Why, Lord, you're, you're my shepherd. You're with me at all times walking by side. You're thinking of me even when I'm not thinking of you. How would you answer that question? Who do you say that I am? How you answer that question not only says something very important about who the Lord is to you, but about who you are 
relation to the Lord? Do we know him? Even though his own neighbors did not. Even though they just fell back to, well, he's the, the carpenter's son, you know, the son of Mary. We know his brothers and sisters, more likely the, the translation properly is cousins, extended family, or that circle of family. How would you respond to the Lord? The scriptures are being proclaimed to us this day so that we can think about it very carefully and answer the Lord's question in our own hearts. So now, dear friends, we stand together and we proclaim our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only son. I'm sorry, let's, I was doing the creed. Let's look at the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. So, dear friends, we open our hearts now as we bring before the Lord our prayers and our petitions. For the needs of the <clears throat> Universal Church, St. Patrick Parish, and in particular for Father Mark Gorwinski on the anniversary of his ordination. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Father and all priests and religious, may the Holy Spirit continue to lead and guide them in proclaiming that Christ is Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials, may God bless their work in bringing peace to divided communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For the sick, may Jesus, who is the divine physician, grant them healing graces. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this community of believers, 
May God's loving presence and our participation in the sacraments protect and perfect us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be welcomed into the fullness of paradise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the homebound viewing this Mass, that they may be healed by the loving touch of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O good and gracious God, hear these, our prayers, the many in our hearts, as we place our trust in you. We pray now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. My friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to our most gracious and loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise and the glory of his name. Our good and the good. Amen. May this offering dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and one day and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them up, up to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, 
with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And so, dear friends, in song, we proclaim this great mystery of our faith. we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here together in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may all be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, his auxiliary bishops, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all the holy apostles, St. Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, dear friends, what a privilege it is to pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray. Deliver us from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our hearts, in our homes, in our world this day. That by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress and anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. I thank you. Let us share together a sign of Christ's peace. My dear friends, behold. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we invited to share together in this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
And let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Are there announcements? Well, friends, it's been great being with you. Uh, stay dry. Stay cool. Watch the heat. Don't let it uh, surprise you. Be careful. And God bless you all. The Lord be with you. And with your, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Stay.